All right, hello everyone. I just wanted to take a moment to send out some uh, reports to your schools, individual schools, and I wanted to send a little video to go along with it just to explain what some of these reports mean. Uh, it can get very overwhelming to go through SMAP and to understand, you know, and to really find out which is the best report to look at. Uh, so um, I know there might be a lot of questions and I'm always available if you're interested in having me come over uh, to either work with you individually as department chairs or to work with your uh, department and be able to really dig deep and look at different reports and for you to ask questions that you might have. Uh, I've been doing that with a number of schools already. Okay, but we're going to go ahead and jump in and I wanted to go through a, a little bit of the SMAP or as the official name is NWA map. So if you do Google it or go on YouTube and want to get some tutorials, it is called the map test. Uh, also, uh, there's going to be an achievement score and a growth score. And I'm also going to talk about CASP a little bit. I do have some data for that. All right. So first, I uh, just wanted to remind ourselves, well, this is a pretty new um, program. So some of the terminology here uh, that we want to make uh, be aware of. So first of all, achievement. So achievement or that RIT score that we're going to see is how the students are doing compared to all of the students who took this test across the nation uh, in the fall compared to in the winter and in the, in the spring. So that RIT score, known as the RASH unit of measurement, right, uh, is going to be showing up three different times, right? Where are they at? Now the test, of course, progressively gets harder uh, throughout the year. Now, some teachers have used the RIT acronym and changed it up and said it means ready for instruction today. So I want you to think of it not as a summative test. There were questions on there that your students probably have not uh, learned in your class. So I don't want you to feel like, oh my goodness, my students scored so low. I didn't even cover that. Yes, we know that, right? Remember this is a computer adaptive test. It is going to try to find that 50 percentile and where is their score at 50% of the time. And I'll go over it a little bit more, but again, uh, compared to other students in that same grade level taking this test at that same uh, amount of instructional time, how are they doing? So achievement percentile. Then a very powerful data that you're going to get is the growth percentile. How are the students doing from the last time they took this test to this new testing window that they took? So we're going to see some data compared from fall of last year to fall of this year. You could always change that window. So this is powerful for you to see, are my students actually moving? Uh, are they, you know, again, moving as they are projected to move? Or do they need to accelerate the learning? Do I, as a teacher, need to work with some of those students to get them to work a little faster? They need to make up a lot more, right? Which I know is very difficult, but this is where we can find those intervention tools that they might need. Okay, so some of the reports that you're going to see uh, that I'm gonna send you is, for example, this one, this is just for reading. This is for your entire school. So if you have high school, it's going to go from ninth all the way to 12th grade, which is different from the CASP report. We've never had this kind of data for our ninth, 10th and 12th grade students. So what you'll see here is, again, this is the fall and this is where your students land as a whole school. And so down below, I went ahead and did some addition there. Please double check my math, right? But according to this data, and this is a, just a random school, uh, you can see how many students are below grade level. So that green bar, notice it is 61 to 80 percent. According to NWEA for California, they should be at 70 percentile to be projected to be on the proficiency, right, for the CASP. So even this is a little misguiding, right? So you really have to dig in and see where the students are at. So Notice here only 5% are above that 80 percentile. So this is the kind of report you're going to see. I'm also going to show you uh, the report that breaks it down by grade level. This is a great conversation piece for your PLCs. Are students at the achievement that they need to be? Are there any grade level that we're seeing that, oh, they might need some more support? Is there any grade level that's doing well? And we can say, hey, I wonder what's going on. Is it a maturity thing, right? Uh, motivation and so forth. So again, you can take a look at your own school and how your students are doing. I definitely would be concerned with those kiddos in the red and find out, is it a motivation issue or is it a real learning uh, gap, right? So again, this is what you'll see. 
Take a look at another one. Of course, we're going to also show you the language usage, which has some more to do with the grammar and the mechanics of writing. And so as you'll see here, you can start making decisions. Do we need to focus on uh, the more of the writing, the vocabulary, the, right, the structure of writing? Or do you need to focus more on the informational uh, literature or, uh, you know, some of the other literary uh, aspects of the reading part? So you can, again, make those decisions. And again, like I said, I'm welcome to work with your department to talk about what would be the best uh, pathway. I have been meeting with schools. They have been calling me in to work with small group grade levels at a time and do backward planning based on this kind of data. All right, so let's keep going. So again, you'll see uh, the language usage broken down by grade level, same as before. You'll see your percentages there and kind of have to make those decisions of where do we want to go with this information. All right, that was the achievement. Now let's talk about growth reports. So a really powerful growth report uh, that you I'm going to send you is looks like this. So I'm not gonna go over all of the little details here. There's lots of little YouTube videos you can look for uh, that, helps you that helps explain some of this. But what you want to look at is this little yellow little diamond or orange little diamond is the projected growth. So here is again, based on other students who had scored at this level. So here's fall. So according to this, last year in the fall, my ninth graders were at about 209, right? 209. When they took this test again in the fall of 2023, they got a 211. And so that's what I'm seeing here, this growth. So let's take a moment. Yes, my students might not be at that achievement level that I want them to be, but they're moving, they're growing. This is a good sign, right? So I definitely want that little diamond to be completely covered by this bar. That means the students are, again, and this is the average, right? The average students here are growing. And so you'll see here, 209, they went to 211. They were projected to grow 1.7 points here, but they grew three points. Now remember, at the high school level is very hard to move up by lots of points. So yes, we wanna celebrate every little increment of growth. Same thing, take a look at those 11th graders because those 11th graders are the ones who are going to be taking that CASP test later this year. So they went from 214 to 216, a little bit of growth. Now take a look at those 10th graders. Here, what we see is that last fall, they took a 215, that's where they were at for the risk score, and they only went up to 16, right? So very little growth, and that's what you're seeing. They were projected to grow two points compared to other students in the nation were projected to grow 2.2 points, right? But here, the 10th graders, these group of 10th graders didn't meet that goal, right? So we need to find out, okay, what's going on with these little uh, 12th graders, right? 10th graders. Here, right, we have some, and here, wow, those seniors really, right, surpassed what the projected growth was for their grade level. So that's a little bit, and you'll see the same thing that I'm gonna send you both the reading score and then the uh, language score. If you see something like this, it means that they pretty much kind of like uh, did not show any growth. So notice here for the 10th graders, they got a 213 in the fall and they got a 214. So it's a very short, right? The observed growth was zero. They were projected to grow just 1.9. So there really wasn't much growth there. And we want to talk about that. Like, you know, again, remember we had the summer. So between the last fall to this fall, Right? Was there a backward slide? You know, did they take the test seriously? Did they think it matters? Uh, a lot of it, um, you know, sometimes if, if we ourselves don't think that it's a valuable test, they might sense that too. And so, you know, let them know. It's just another form of measurement to see if they are on track. All right, again, uh, I don't wanna go too much into it unless, you know, again, if you wanna call me in. Here's another great little piece of information that's, that's helpful that, you know, I did some digging around and this is called a linking report. So what this is, is that the research uh, department of NWEA took different assessments from different states and looked at California's assessment. So we have SBAC and they said, okay, if a student is projected to get a three, a three is at proficiency level, this is what a three would look like. Now we only have data for 11th graders at the high school. So this is a 2583 would be at grade level. Well, how does that translate into 
into our SMAP scores, this is it, 223. So a student in the fall would have to get a 223 to be projected to be at proficiency level. So you keep that in mind, and I'm gonna show you this data here. So here I'm back to my reading growth. My 11th graders in the fall of, two six, right, of 2023 got a 216. So on average, my 11th graders are not at that proficiency level. They, we have to accelerate. We have to do a little bit more intensive right, instruction. Uh, and you know, maybe not all students because again, this is an average of my students. So again, 216, this is where they're at right now, 216. I'm gonna go back here and our goal to try to get them to proficiency is at 223. This might be some data that I share with the class. Hey, make it as a, a class goal. Make it a little bit of competition. Can we meet? Can we be on par with the rest of the nation? How are we? If you were to go out there and you want to be a YouTube influencer, right, as, as a student, or do you have the literacy, the speaking skills, reading skills to compete in that world out there? All right. So that's, that's kind of what this uh, is going to show you. So we'll do both the reading one and then the uh, language one, I'll send you also the language one. Okay, so a lot of teachers are asking, well, what does this test even have on it? All right, well, the NWEA does not not release uh, these tests because again, I want you to understand, you can have a class of 35 and each of those students is taking a different test. So I, it's not possible for me to see a ninth grade test or a 10th grade test. I could get some sample questions, but most of those questions are basically similar to our SBAC. All right, so if anything, you can still use SBAC type of questions to help your students, you know, how to teach them how to do a, take a test, how to narrow down their answers, test taking skills, basically. Okay, so I did find this great little reference guide uh, that I'm going to show you, and I think it's wonderful. So uh, I'm, I'm sending you this whole PowerPoint, and it looks like this. And if you scroll down to page 23 is really our category over here, and it'll give you reading and language and so forth. All right, so what you'll see here is they give you a little sample of what kind of questions students are answering 50% of their time if they're getting a certain risk score. So if a student is reading, is doing the reading section, and they're looking at literary text, right? Remember, we have literary, we have informative, right? And we have vocabulary, right? This is what it looks like. If they're scoring lower than 151, you can kind of see the kind of questions that they're getting. You know, again, if the student is not really trying or they have, you know, maybe it's an English learner, a student with special needs, you'll see the type of question where they're at right now. And you can look at the next level of how you can challenge them and make that question, those type of questions for them, a little bit more challenging. We want to move them over to that uh, next brand, right? It's very hard to move a kid from a 161 to a 210, especially, you know, again, it's, if we take away the motivation issue, if they really are trying, and this is their actual skill level, it's very hard to move them so many points over. So I'm really gonna to try to move them just one band over, get them closer and closer, right? Really just showing growth. So you can see here, and again, you have the link and you can kind of explore this, you know, what it looks like. Here's that 230, take a look at the type of passage they're getting, the type of question they're getting, right? And so that's what I wanna kind of move my students. I wanna see what kind of, um, how can I modify some of my, um, you know, class activities and lessons to kind of match the wording uh, so that my students are not, you know, in shock when they take this test. Then here's the language, right? So here we have some more on literary text for language. You could see, uh, uh, again, what, what the kind of questions they're asking, very simple ones at the lower level, a little bit more complex ones, as you can see here. I always tell teachers, you know, when doing vocabulary instruction, um, try to avoid giving them just, you know, things to memorize, like what's the definition? Like, yes, that's good to know. However, these kind of tests are going to ask, um, you know, what effect does it have on the reader? Or in context, how does this word, you know, how would you define this word? So lots of context evidence or context clues to help us understand a, a word. So vocabulary instruction, very important. Again, and here's more for you to look at. So you can definitely use this as a sample 
uh, or as a guide to help you. So I'm going to keep going. And then another good one, let's talk about CAS reports. A lot of people, teachers might feel like, you know, uh, NWA, it's a district test. Maybe uh, kids were, weren't having it, right? They didn't feel like it was very important. Well, remember that for high school, we only get the uh, junior level, right? We only get uh, 11th graders uh, to get the test and we don't get those results until, you know, the next year. All right, well, I did pull some data from you. Uh, it, because they've changed the test, we no longer get the uh, aggregated score. So we can't really drill down to see how did they do with just the writing portion? How did they do just with the reading, just with the writing, right? So we only get this overall score. So that's why it's a little frustrating with, with CAS reports. All right, so you'll have the comparison of how the district is doing compared to your own school. So here you'll see the district and then you'll see the score, the, your own school. You'll see the school year. This is going to be the reading. Uh, yep, just ELA. Remember this is gonna be reading and writing. So some of that. So here you'll see. And what I did is I broke this one down, this top one is gonna be broken down by those levels, level three, right? Uh, not met, below level, right? And so forth. So level one, two, three, four. So you'll see here clearly if you have a lot of students in that below grade level, right? Below proficiency. So this, the standard not met, right? So according to this school here, out of 164 students, 40% of them are way in that red zone, right? Notice how much we have at that green and blue zone. Now I also grouped them just so you can see that data a little bit closer. And so you'll see again, it'll be your same school, 164 students. And again, this is, you have 65% of this uh, school here, this grade level 11th graders scoring on that CAS, right? Uh, so below grade level. And so I broke it down a little bit uh, there for you. Got it? Okay. And so you'll see that for CAS. Um, like I said, I can't really drill down uh, too much on that. So that's the only piece of data that you'll have on CAS. Now, as I said, um, there are some great tools out there if you have the time, right? Again, I could sit with you, uh, but you do have some of these available. So I found this great little uh, website that you can you know, go to. It'll take you to this link here. You do need to have your username and password. So I already logged in, but you need to have, and you could always, you know, if you forgot your password, you can get it uh, resent to you. But this is really cool because here, um, you can actually now say, okay, my students are really struggling with vocabulary, right? All right, I, I invite you to scroll down and go to this playlist. So if you go to this playlist, you can now choose a subject, choose a grade level, right? And what it'll do, it's, it'll give you all of these standards, all of these lessons that other people have already created that are aligned with SBAC, right? It has these type of questions. So you can create your little own playlist. So for example, maybe I just want to do reading and maybe I just want to do word meaning, right? So it's going to keep drilling down. And maybe I just want something to do with here, right? Uh, informational reading. And so now I have, right? And depending if, you know, if I keep it a little bit more broad, I'll have more. But here is a, a lesson already created. So if I click on it, it'll give me, right? Kind of, oh, it's asking me to log in. All right, so I'll log in. Let's see if it'll go. There's my location. Okay, here I am. And so it's gonna ask me to sign in. So I already have, oops. Okay, so you know I'll be able to sign in and so forth, but I wanted to show you that on that playlist, you'll get something like this. So you go to that playlist, and here it'll give you different lessons to choose from. Then it'll show you, this is what a lesson, this is what a student could do if they're below grade level, near or above. And if you click on those hyperlinks, it'll actually give, uh, take you to a beautiful step-by-step -step lesson plan with hyperlinks to handouts and other resources. So, Let's say I'm struggling kind of like, well, what exactly, how do I teach vocabulary and context, or maybe like I said, editing skills. I can take a look at these samples and then start making my own lessons kind of similar to, to what they're doing here. I just thought this is a powerful tool, a great resource for teachers, and maybe even as a PLC that you can kind of dig through. 
All right. Well, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, hopefully, like I said, you have lots of uh, information there at your disposal to make those decisions that you need to make. Uh, and like, as always, I'm here for you and available for you if you need me. Thank you so much.